Hey guys, this is an intro to continuity really for calculus students. So let's just jump right into it. So continuity actually is, I, I think, a pretty intuitive idea at this point in your mathematical career. So I've got two functions here. Which one do you think is continuous? The first one or the second one? So this one you can see has like this split. So this would not be continuous. This one is continuous. So this is continuous. All right, so what actually makes this continuous besides just, you know, well, I just looked at it. Can you come up with something slightly deeper of what makes something continuous? One of the things that mathematicians will talk about is a function is continuous if you can draw it without ever having to pick up your pencil. That's one way that, that math people think about it in a, in a more intuitive sense. But in this video, what we're going to talk about is actually the, the calculus uh, version of continuity, which is more precise. It's a little difficult to understand, but we're going to totally break it down and you'll get it by the end of the video. Okay, so let's talk about what it means to be continuous. And first we talk about just continuity at a point. So not an entire continuous function, but just to be continuous at a point. So a function is continuous at a point C if this is true. The limit as x approaches c of f of x equals f of c. All right, so here's where you want to engage with this video. Can you actually draw a picture of this? And if you're using the guided notes, I actually left some space on the next page for that. Highly recommend you pause the video here and just see if you can wrap your head around what does this actually mean. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so this is actually what this is getting at. So for a limit to, um, to be, sorry, to for a function to be continuous at a point C, this is basically what's happening here. So the limit equals that point and the point is filled in. This is exactly what's happening. Okay, so we'll keep building on this a little bit. So now let's talk about what it means to be right continuous at a point C. So the definition here would be then the limit as X approaches C from the right of F of X is equal to F of C. So once again, what I want you to try to do now is think about what would make something right continuous versus just continuous in general. So it's going to be different from the last picture that we thought about. So again, you might want to pause and just mull this over for a moment. Okay, so here is the actual kind of picture of what's happening here. So notice that the limit as we approach from the right exists, but there is no limit from the left, right? There's actually nothing over here. So this would be an idea of right continuity and once again that point is filled in. Okay so now what about left continuous at a point? Well probably not surprising so then you have the limit as x approaches c from the left that will equal f of c. So it's almost the same drawing except now we just have the limit from the left exists and there's nothing on the right. Okay so this is kind of the idea but sometimes it, it can take a little bit to wrap your head around this. So here's what I've got here. I've got this graph and you might want to pause the video to actually think about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to tr try to figure out what type of continuity exists at these points. Negative four, negative two, one, and three. So maybe you want to pause the video for a second and kind of go over your notes or, or, or rewatch the last part. This, was, this is a really good spot just to really push yourself to try to understand this before you see the solution. Okay, so let's start with x equals 1. So starting at x equals 1, so here's where x equals 1 right here. And so this would actually be just continuous on both sides. So we just say continuous. We don't have to actually say both sides, but I'm just kind of making sure you, you understand that. So notice, right, so the limit from the left and the right um, equal, they, they both exist. And then if I'm actually looking for the limit of whatever this would be, which I'm, I'm not necessarily worried about, it, it is filled in, we can see that it, ex it exists. Okay, so what about at x equals negative 4? What type of continuity exists there? So here's my x equals negative 4. So notice that this is actually a case then where so the, the limit looks like it's approaching this point here, but the actual functional value is up here. So let's write that out. The limit as x approaches negative four of f of x, this is equal to two, but f of negative four is equal to three. So this is a perfect description then of what makes something not continuous. 
so this is just this has no continuity or we say it's discontinuous at this point okay so now I want you to compare x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So again, you might want to actually pause the video to think about this for a moment and figure out what type of continuity exists. So starting with x equals 3, so here's x equals 3. So you can see that there actually is kind of a, a break in the continuity here. And the point that you're really interested in is going to be the one that's filled in. So where does this limit, wh where would this limit equal this point? This would be the limit on the right, right? So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of this function is going to be the same thing as me just plugging in 3. Now from the left would not be true, right? So if you look at this, from the left it looks like it's approaching 3, and from the right it looks like it's approaching 4, and it's only at f of 3 does this actually equal 4. So that's kind of the relationship that you're looking for. So let's compare that to x equals negative 2. So coming here, so I've got this point here and here. So what type of, um, oh sorry, so I didn't even define this. So this would be um, right continuity, so I'll just write CTY. And now for x equals negative 2, so the limit on the left is equal to this filled in point. So this would be left continuous. Okay, so just to review. So you have a function is continuous at a point C then, when you have these three exist conditions all happening at the same time. You have that f of c exists and the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists and these two things are equal to one another. This is like the key thing that you're looking for when you're talking about continuity. All right so moving on let's talk about discontinuities. So there's a couple different types which I would highly recommend that you just write down so that you have a better chance of kind of remembering them. And I always recommend actually that you, you try to pause this video and write things down as, as you're going through it. It just helps you to remember it better versus just listening to me describe it and nodding your head and saying, oh yeah, that makes sense. If you write it down, you, you retain it better. Okay, so the first one is we've got a jump discontinuity. So it's continuous and then it jumps up. The next one is a removable discontinuity. So it looks like, you know, we, we could technically fill in this point and then this, this function would suddenly be continuous, right? So that's removable discontinuity. Then we have an infinite discontinuity. So this is this idea of this asymptote. So this discontinuity is just going to continue on for forever. This, this function is just going to always kind of get closer and closer to this asymptote. So that's an infinite discontinuity. And then the last one is an oscillating discontinuity. So um, it just kind of is bubbling over. So that actually probably sounds pretty familiar to other things that we've talked about in calculus. And so um, you can definitely like relate this to other things. So what makes a function continuous? When do we say something is continuous versus it just being continuous at a point? Well mathematicians aren't very creative sometimes when we name things. So a function is continuous if it is continuous at every point. So there's di there's like two different types of, of the use of the, the word continuous. So we have continuous at a point, which is what we've been talking about for the first part of this video. And now we're moving on to just straight up continuous, which if something is continuous, then you know it's continuous at every point. And if it's not continuous, then we say it's discontinuous. Okay, so something we get out of continuous functions, we actually get several properties out of them that, that make working with them really, really simple. And the reason why we kind of obsess over continuous functions is that things work so nicely with them. Um, th that's like, you're guaranteed to have your math work out a lot nicer when you have a continuous function. Think about the types of functions you probably don't like to work with. They're probably actually discontinuous. For instance, like piecewise functions, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so if I have two functions that are continuous at this point, then the following are continuous. So the sum and difference of these functions, that would also be a continuous function, as long as f and g are continuous. If I took one of those functions and I multiplied it by a number k, that would be continuous. Again, consider writing these down. The product of the two functions would be continuous. The quotient of the functions would be continuous as long as g does not equal zero anywhere. If I took a power of one of the functions, that would also be continuous. If I took a root of one of the functions, that would be continuous. 
And then finally, if I took the composition of the two functions, and if you forgot what the composition means, so it's, it's f of g, or it looks like this, whichever way you think of it, this would also be continuous. Okay, so thinking about this, um, we can now kind of leverage this to help us figure out when are functions actually continuous. And in a lot of ways, like you've probably done exercises like this before, but now we're just slightly tweaking the question to ask when is something continuous. So I've got two functions here. So maybe you want to pause the video for a second and just see if you can think about when these are actually continuous. Hit play when you're ready. So for this first function, so you know actually just by looking at it that you can't have a zero in the denominator, so you're going to have a problem spot at x equals 2, but otherwise this function is going to be fine. So if I am trying to describe where is this function continuous, it's really everywhere but 2. And if I want to describe that in interval notation, so I, I really just need to exclude 2. So here's how you exclude 2 in interval notation. Now, if you're rusty on interval notation and you need a refresher on that, I will drop a link to my review video on that in the um, description. Okay, now for this, this particular um, function, this is the square root of 2x. So you can't have your square root, the, the thing under the square root can never be negative, but really there's no other place where this is going to be um, discontinuous, right? There are no problem spots. So this is really continuous on the entire domain from zero to infinity. So you'll have um, some exercises that, that ask you about these things and you have to kind of consider the domain. A lot of times the domain will lead you to the, con uh, the, the continuity and where that function is continuous. Okay, so um, I have just one more thing I wanna talk about in this intro to continuity. So I wanna talk about limits and I wanna talk about limits of compositions of continuous functions. So here's the situation. Let's say that I've got my, my limit as x approaches c of f of x. Let's say that this equals l. We'll, we'll give it the number l. And then g is another continuous function. So here's what happens if you have a composition of those functions. If I'm trying to figure out what is the limit as x approaches c of g of f of x, well, I know that the limit as x approaches c, right, if I leverage this, I know that this middle part should equal l. So then all I have to do really is, is just plug in l into this. So this actually is very, very powerful and, and helps us kind of figure out what do we do with, with limits and continuous functions. This tells us that as long as we know that a function is continuous, we like it makes evaluating that limit really, really simple because we can really just plug in kind of the, the value here, right? So let me show you just one example of this, although I do have other examples. Okay, so check this out. I want to find the limit as x approaches zero of x plus two times e to the sine of x. So this part here is a composition, and then this is actually the product of two continuous functions. Well, x plus two is continuous, so I actually know that I can just plug in zero into that, no problem. And then um, e is continuous, as is sine of x, so I can just plug in the zero and, and evaluate this easy peasy. Oops, and sorry, this was not x plus zero, this was zero plus two. Okay, so now this will be 2e, so what is sine of 0? It's just 0. And then e to the 0 will just be 1, so this ultimately just equals 2. So if you know that you have continuous functions and you're looking at like a composition, or even if you're not looking at a composition, knowing that something is continuous makes evaluating that limit so much simpler. So this was just an intro to continuity, so I just wanted to kind of cover a breadth of topics. I have a lot of example videos just discuss, uh, discussing other parts, or if you want to see more examples of anything you saw in this video, feel free to check those out. If you have any questions or comments, um, just drop them below the video, and hopefully I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.